Guys, gals, my name is Luke. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. It is time for a bushcraft adventure. Yes, we had one of those recently, but I had so much fun that I wanted to come back out and do it again. When it comes to bushcraft, there's so much to do. The possibilities really are endless. So, the question becomes, what are we going to do on this trip? When I say we, I'm talking about you and me. Anytime that I come out for a bushcraft trip, I really like to just go with the flow, see what speaks to me. And in truth, when it comes to bushcraft, that is one of the most valuable skills. It's something that you need to practice. Go out with no plans and see what you can come up with because ultimately, that is a survival skill. You wanna get good with survival, get good with bushcraft, backpacking, combine all of those skills together, it starts there. I'm going to take a break here and explain to you all and show you all exactly what I've done so that we're on the same page. Seeing everything on the screen may not quite make sense, so I will explain this the best that I can. Essentially what I did, I created a hang system with some paracord and a piece of wood. It has a fork in it. That makes an awesome backpack support. You can also support your gear if you want to. Essentially keeping it off of the ground, which is very important, especially here at Lone Wolf Mountain because this is Deer Mountain. There are deer everywhere. There's bears, I thought I just saw one, but there's ticks everywhere. So I really do not want my gear sitting down on the ground. As you can see here with my shelter system, I will be sleeping on the ground, but I'm fully protected from the bugs and so on. And I'll explain that in just a minute. Next up with my shelter setup here, you all can see that I've used a tarp. Now, instead of using two supports, I've used one. The question for you all is, why did I do that? Why don't you go ahead, pause the video, and answer that question in the comment section down below. I will answer the question in five, four, three, two, and one. One very simple reason, weather. The one post solution for your tarp setup is the easiest way to make adjustments just in case weather comes in. Today, there is a chance of rain and thunderstorms tonight. I'm not too worried about it, it's a pretty low chance, but you have to be proactive. That is why I went with this setup here. If the weather comes in, it gets nasty, I can lower this thing down and make minor adjustments all the way around, no big deal. The dual support system is fantastic for drier weather, but if there's a chance of rain and storms, I recommend this way. In conjunction with the tarp here, I have a ground sheet. Now, a few days ago before I came out for this adventure, I dual treated this ground sheet. Not only with permethrin, which kills ticks and bugs and mosquitoes and spiders and all that stuff, but I've also treated it with repellent. If you're going to sleep on the ground, this is a great way to do it. Next up, when it comes to sleeping on the ground, am I going to be comfortable? Yes. Again, the question is, why is that? I'll go ahead and answer that instead of giving you all the opportunity. I scored the ground before I put down my ground sheet. Essentially, it's loose dirt. It's not compact. I also got rid of all the debris, the rocks, the sticks, and so on. Scoring the ground like this is a great way to actually sleep on the ground, and it's fairly comfortable. Is it as comfortable as sleeping on a sleeping pad? No.
it is time for a fire, namely because it is coffee time. I'm ready for some bushcraft coffee harnessed from the forests of North Carolina. When it comes to starting a bushcraft fire, it really is all about the materials. If you're not using an ignition source, such as a lighter, it really is all about those materials. It doesn't matter if you're using a ferro rod, flint and steel, doing a friction fire, and so on. It's all about those materials. Cheers everybody, cheers. Coffee time. Today has been a good day. It's been a lot of fun. The thing about bushcraft is that it should be fun. Ultimately, through those experiences, those skills, it will lead and branch out to other areas of your life. You will remember every single second that you spend in the outdoors. You'll remember that time where you struggled with a fire for hours. That's when you discover that, hey, it's not always easy. You'll remember that time when there was smoke blowing in your face. <laughs> Whew. When you struggle, you learn to appreciate. And that's one of the biggest lessons that you'll discover from bushcraft. Let me tell you, tonight's dinner is going to be incredible. But tonight when I'm cooking, I will talk about what bushcraft really is and what it's not. Because I've seen in the comments where there's a few people who are truly confused as to what bushcraft is. Might as well talk about what bushcraft is and what it's not. Because it's not a narrow field of practices. Bushcraft is more of the practice of self-reliance. There's an idea out there that bushcraft is primitive or nothing. You make your own cordage, you make your own knife out of a rock, you build your shelters 100% and that's incorrect. Bushcraft can certainly be those things, but it's not 100% those. At the core of bushcraft, it's all about developing skills and gaining knowledge. That enables you to take care of yourself, to provide for yourself. More than anything, bushcraft is all about your mentality. Survival is about being in nature because you have to be. Bushcraft is about being in nature because you want to be. It is time to cook, everybody. And I have to tell you, I am starving. Already, it smells amazing. It really does. Now it's time for the garlic.
the shrimp, the garlic, the onions, done. I have my French bread ready to go. My rice is boiling now. Should be done in roughly five minutes. The smells are amazing. They really are. For the stove setup, that is known as a log stove or a log split stove. Not only do you have your embers, but the logs themselves, they get hot, they burn. So it helps give you a good even cook. What I have here is going to be incredible. Shrimp, garlic, onions, olive oil, salt, red pepper. I have some rice that is butter and herb and some French bread. So start off here with some garlic and onions. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely amazing. Sometimes I impress myself. <laughs> Wow, that is really good. Let's go shrimp time. Onions, garlic, shrimp. Cheers, everybody, cheers. Mm-hmm. Folks, that is absolutely amazing. When it comes to outdoor meals, this is by far the best meal I've ever had. I highly recommend that you make this. Well, everybody, to pretty much wrap up the night, a viewer sent me a list of questions, and he thought that you all would like to hear the answers to some of these. Some of these I'm not even going to touch upon, like political stuff. I can't win with giving my answers for those. What is your name? My name is Luke. How old are you? Almost 40. If you were named after someone, who was it? I was named after my great grandfather. Do you love playing any sports or just watching it? Neither. I really don't like watching it and I really don't like playing it either. I discovered at a young age that I was very competitive and I'm a happier person not having to be that way. Do you love animals? Yes, I do. Which one do you love the most? Dogs. Dogs are the best. They really are. Do you have children? Yes. I actually have three children. You guys know Madison, and then there's Lucas. But uh, Susan and I, we had a son who passed away when he was really young, which I'm not really going to talk about. So, how many children do you want to have? <laughs> the ones I have are plenty. No more kids. Am I married? Yes. For, let's see, we've been married for roughly 15 years and we've been together for almost 20. What is your favorite drink? Coffee, of course. If it wasn't getting late, I'd have a cup right now. I really would. What is your greatest achievement? Um, I've had some pretty good successes. I'm not going to brag about anything. I'd say my greatest achievement in general is just raising two good kids who have good heads on their shoulders. How tall are you? That's a good question. 5'4". I'm pretty short. Have I ever dreamt of being taller? No. Have you ever dreamt of being a lawyer? No. <laughs> that deer is just hanging out. Not scared at all. How awesome is that, everyone? That deer is just hanging out with me, listening to the answers to my questions. <laughs> That's so funny. If you could give some advice, what would it be? Well, my advice is this. Keep your life simple. Be honest. Try to do good. Be yourself. You owe no one anything. So go out there, do what you want to. Try to leave a positive impact. Work hard because you're not going to get anything if you don't work hard. You're not going to appreciate it if you don't work hard for it. With that question being answered, it's a good time to stop. Whew. Everyone, I am done. I'm also hot and sweaty. Whew. The moon is coming up. Looks like it's full. It's going to be a beautiful night. No rain, no thunderstorms so far. These bushcraft trips 
even though the videos tend to be shorter in nature, they wipe me out. They're just so much work. It's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work at the same time. I'm beat. I have my blanket, my poncho liner, military. I'll wrap myself up in that when I need it. By morning, it will be somewhat cool. Should be down right around 50 degrees. Everyone, I'm going to bed. I'll see you all in the morning. I will come back if anything crazy happens, but yeah, as is, I'm done. So everyone, good night. I think he's singing to me. What do you guys think? It's roughly midnight. I've been sleeping a little bit. But this guy, he woke me up. His song is beautiful, isn't it? It's awesome. Listen to those crows. Shut up. Oh. <sighs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I would have slept later, but listen to that. Shut up. It was super loud. They got started early. I have to tell you all that I slept great. Very comfortable night. It, it finally cooled down, I'd say around like 10 o'clock or so. It's not cold. My woobie blanket, poncho liner is doing just fine. It's doing its job. I really don't need it. Last night was fantastic. I see the owls were hooting last night, just singing back and forth. That was cool. And at some point in time, I see there were deer snorting at me, but I don't know. They didn't seem too close. With the owls, I actually woke up numerous times last night because they were singing, sometimes fairly close. Ugh, better get up. Okay, well, it is coffee time, breakfast time. I guess before I get up, I should talk about bugs. Did I have anything flying around? Every once in a while, a moth would fly in, but that's it. I stayed bug-free all night long. I see one little caterpillar that crawled onto it, and it's dead. So that means that the permethrin's doing its job. Permethrin kills, and bug repellent repels. There is a difference. Now, when it comes to using leaves to start your fire in the morning, it can be deceptively challenging. And that's because leaves will absorb every bit of moisture that's in the environment. If you do a poor job with your selection, you won't get a fire. Hopefully I've done pretty good. It didn't take long for me to warm up. Whew. It is supposed to be another warm day today, just like yesterday. I really hate making it look that easy because oftentimes it's not. And you will discover that when you go out into the outdoors.
Breakfast is pretty much made. It smells and looks amazing. So what I have here are some eggs, garlic, onions, fried in olive oil. In addition to that, I'm having some jam and toast. You may have seen this little box here. This is a bento box. I guess the idea, the design of this comes from Japan. It's really, really cool. It's a great idea. And the thing is, they're awesome for bushcraft. They're awesome for your outdoor adventures and whatnot. Some butter toast to start the day with some hot coffee, which is almost guaranteed to be nasty. Mm -hmm. Let's have a bite of the egg, shall we? Before we get to the morning news, we'll see what's going on in the world today. So, eggs, onions, garlic, fried to perfection. Smells amazing. Mm-hmm. Smells amazing and is amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. That garlic, it really does make everything super awesome. That red pepper gives it a little bit of heat. The salt on top. So when it comes to the news stories for today, now we have to remember the rules. No politics, no religion. Connecticut woman arrested twice on the same day for drinking and driving. She's on a roll, huh? Utah man rescued from 12-inch drainage pipe after falling asleep, becoming trapped. <laughs> what? South Carolina man burns down home because he suspected his wife of having an affair. <laughs> Canadian man breaks into property, but leaves behind a photocopy of his face. <sighs> I wonder how that happened. Spanish town slaps tax on dog owners for poop cleanup. We'll just tax more. Sounds good. Texas man known as Baby Jesus accused of taunting cops with motorcycle stunts. <laughs> Drunk Marine breaks into Florida home, tells owners to go back to sleep. That's funny. My uncle is a Marine. Retired, of course. My good buddy Chris is a Marine. I can tell you one thing for certain. Marines know how to party. All right, continuing on. Texas man arrested for allegedly riding horse drunk. Okay. Florida man parks smart car in kitchen to protect it from Hurricane Dorian. It's one of those tiny little cars that looks like a shoe, like a baby shoe. <laughs> he must really like that car. Wisconsin Christian school to open at site of former strip club. <laughs> All right, this is the last one. Oregon woman rescued from septic tank after being trapped in raw sewage for days. Well, everyone, that pretty much wraps up this episode. There's not a whole lot left to do or to discuss. You know, with these trips here, I call them shorts. They're overnight adventure shorts, and I'm going to do more of these because, well, first off, I really enjoy doing these. I try to do a little bit more artistic work as much as possible. I mean, filming takes so much time in general. Doing everything else takes so much time in general, but I try to put some pretty shots in there. But If you will, do me a favor. Comment down below and tell me what you think about this episode. Give me a good name for these. Overnight adventure, shorts, something or other. You guys tell me. You know, there's a time and a place for an overnight trip that's an hour and a half long, like our Colorado trip. But then again, there's times where you want something that's about 20, 30 minutes. People have things to do. I get it. Everyone, I want to thank you all very much for joining me for this episode. Make sure to comment down below, share your thoughts about these shorter adventures. And if you come up with a good name, make sure to comment that down below. If you want to support the channel, please do so through Patreon. It is appreciated. The Outdoor Gear Review is 100% agenda free. We're not trying to sell you anything. You will not find affiliate links. I'm never going to tell you that a product is great, so you click the buy button and I get a few bucks. Everyone, take care, strength and honor. See ya.